you will get lost in the back rooms. Navigating the boundless expanse of the back rooms often leads to unexpected twists, with a predetermined direction of your journey rarely ever going to plan, due to its endless and ever-shifting properties. However, as part three of our journey through the surreal landscapes of the back rooms continues, my commitment to unraveling the secrets concealed within its depths remains unwavering. I aim to push forward and get us back on track to get the answer to the question, is it truly possible to escape the back rooms? So moving on with our quest in the face of the unknown, and with our perseverance Feeling the pursuit of understanding and revolution. I am Ebonic. This is part three of Escaping the Backrooms. Like and subscribe, and I hope you enjoy our journey to get back on track. The Metro. The Metro is a unique backrooms level which serves as a mysterious subway system that links to the safer levels of the backrooms. Featuring, of course, the station with dimly illuminated platforms, benches, vending machines, and basically whatever is in your stereotypical subway station. The Metro is a class habitable level, which means it is safe, has way for sustainability, and is completely devoid of harmful entities. There's a lot of different trains here that take you to different levels, but we're only going to be taking the Blue Bullet train, which will take us to level minus 382. All trains from the metro look basically the same from the inside, so personally, I would probably look for first class. Or you could just go to a regular chair, fair enough. Although there are rumours of a bullet train that goes to the front rooms, this is sadly just not true. Alright Steve, this is your stop. Welcome to level minus 382, or by its other name, Mitogoria. Mitogoria is characterized by surreal and dreamlike biomes that mirror the landscapes of reality, which at times can shift to evoke nostalgia to whoever wanders this level. Because of this, the level is a class variable, as it has varying safety, varying stability, and basically is devoid of entities. This is also the case due to there being four different biomes with their own difficulty class. The biome we're currently in right now is biome 1, which is a class 0 survival difficulty and consists of surreal forests that invoke a sense of tranquility and surrealism. Mitogoria provides essential resources for survival. We can go into additional food sources later, but let's focus on the vital water supply that is from the lakes and fruit that are from the diverse plants which grow at a way faster rate than normal plants. During the initial days of Mitogoria, drinking water may induce a temporary sense of nausea, however you'll just get used to it. You would also be prone to passing out when the surroundings change, but you should be fine as long as you're not in water or next to a cliff. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so we have Biome 2, which comprises of an intricate network of underground tunnels and cave systems. However, it is a class 2 environmental difficulty and can be quite dangerous, so there's not really a point to go in there. If you want almond water, you're gonna have to pass through Biome 3 to Biome 4, which is a class free environmental difficulty biome. Biome 3 is a desert biome that is trapped in eternal midnight, which makes it quite weird since as soon as you enter it, it fades from day to night instantly. Despite it being a desert at night, it is absolutely unbearably hot. There are also mirages that can be seen which are way more extreme, so whatever that is in the distance, it's not real, so just ignore it and keep heading forwards. Finally, Biome 4 is an expansive ocean which is filled with almond water and is a class undetermined. And like Biome 3, this biome is always in afternoon time. Encountering Biome 4 is often through wandering Biome 3, so if you want to get the sweet, sweet almond water, you're more likely going to have to pass through the desert. This level is kind of great, but kind of not at the same time. Due to the mental effects of the backrooms, many wanderers can find themselves going crazy or insane due to what the backrooms does to you. However, this level really helps with that, and uh, since you can only really leave if you truly found peace, yeah, you can only really leave this level when you have found true peace within. So your tasks for this level, Steve, are to not die of first or hunger, of course. You have an optional task of finding an almond water container. It beats me where you're gonna find it, but yeah. And your main task, of course, is to find inner peace. So have fun. Holy shit. 
shit, Steve. Damn, it seems you have finally achieved your true peace, Hagrid. I'm guessing it has helped since before all of this, you were kind of not the best. But now, since you have peace, a boat should appear. So all you need to do now is take that boat wherever Mittelgoria decides to take us. Welcome to level Blue Horizon, which is an anomalous level of the backrooms. Upon entry, you encounter an intricate network of interconnected pools separated by tunnels. Level Blue Horizon is a class 0 level, and so it is safe, stable, and completely devoid of any entity. Now, Steve, I'm guessing you would have liked the actual change of scenery, as, you know, I would probably be sick of the same thing for 6 months. Blue Horizon serves as a speculated nexus, theoretically linking all pool levels within the backrooms or possibly acting as the parent level to the pool levels and their respective sub-levels. This is because of each section of this level intricately correlates with the various pool levels, just with the lack of entities that would probably be in those levels. Now you have arrived here from the endless ocean, Steve, which seems to stretch on into eternity and is somehow always lukewarm and clean. Honestly, other than its beautiful looks, there isn't really much to do here. There isn't even like food or anything here, so it's literally just an empty space of pools. But that's fine, Steve, as the only task you actually have in this level is to find a set of sliding glass doors, which will lead you to a safe level that has pools, which you've actually already found. What? Congratulations. So yeah, with my yap session over, just go through the glass doors and find out where we're going next. Level 699. Oh my god, isn't this level pretty? Honestly, Steve, you gotta be one of the luckiest guys in the backgrounds because this, this is a nice level, okay? Welcome, Steve, to level 699, also known as the Azure Deep. The Azure is apparently a safe haven that has achieved a mythical status due to it being a class habitable level, meaning it is safe, has sustainability for life, and is completely devoid of any entities. The Azure presents itself as a sizable complex of indoor swimming pools divided into three separate areas which we will get into in a sec. Within level 699 there are many different furnishings which include chairs, tables and vending machines. These vending machines, in fact no clipping into these will send us straight into level 399 which would what I was going to say, if you let me finish. No clipping into these vending machines would send us straight to level 399, but its chances of that are astronomically low. Anyways, back to my explanation, the pools in this level are filled with a substance like almond water, however, this liquid instead has a distinct chlorine smell. The water regularly cleans itself, and although smelling like it, this liquid has absolutely no chlorine in it, making this water completely safe to drink. Now onto the three areas of Azure, the first being the Moody Spa, which is where we entered from. It's the safest and the most resource-rich area featuring vending machines and snacks. This place is honestly luxury, Steve. You're eating good tonight. Today, okay, whatever time it is. This place also features snack bars and also a glass of iced tea can just randomly appear on some tables when no one's looking. Now, the second area, which is called the Violet Pools, boasts narrow, winding, carpeted passageways with hot tubs, which because of these create a humid atmosphere. And finally, the third area, which is the Azure Tiles area, is the most common part of this level, which has flooded passageways and is slightly colder. Honestly, Steve, I really wouldn't blame you if you wanted to just stay here. It is a very nice place, but there is just one thing. The 699 effect. The 699 effect is, to put it simply, is the inability to feel any sort of discomfort, pain, hunger, or even thirst. Until you realize, even though you may not feel anything, it still affects your body. So injuries can go unnoticed for days, and you're still at risk from dying of hunger. So your task, Steve, are to keep time when you lost eight, drank, and slept, to not perish, and wait three to four months for a train to come, which will take you to the next level. Yes, three to four months. I get it, it's long, right? But let's be for real, it's not like you actually have to survive. Think of it like a four-month vacation. Okay, enjoy whatever this is for three months. You know guys, Steve King in this level was an extremely low percentage, but you know, not as low as the subscribe to non-subscribe percentage. So yeah, if you've been enjoying this video, feel free to subscribe and like. I spent so much time and effort on these videos and I would seriously appreciate a like, comment, or everything else. But yeah.
You know, Steve, I'm gonna congratulate you. You've actually survived in the backrooms for an entire year. Yeah, dang. And look at you, you're completely fine. Damn! Anyways, your train should actually be here now, so all is left to do is to take it to the next phase of your adventure. It shouldn't take too long, hopefully. Welcome to level 154, or actually station 154, which is another train station of the back room, similar to the metro, but with the exception that this level's train system works just a little differently and has a very neon theme throughout the entire level. Once again, like the metro, this level is a class habitable level, which means it is actually safe, has a way for sustainability, and is completely devoid of any harmful entities. Look at you, Steve. You see, after you get through all the ass of the back rooms, you're getting into some pretty alright levels for the time being. Inhabiting this level are entities which are called facelings. In fact, you have actually encountered one of these before, however, maybe not the friendliest types. But yeah, in this level though, you don't actually need to worry as they're under the level 11 effect. I'll go into this a bit more later, but it's not really important right now. However, this does mean they practically just act like a normal person. This level has an interior of an advanced subway station being cleaner than the average subway station. Probably because there are many times where you can just witness a faceling cleaning the floor. The neon lights make this level unusually beautiful. And normally have multiple different colored lights however depending on which line you're actually taking there would be colors which correspond with the line that the train runs on speaking of trains actually the way these trains act which actually is the way we're going to proceed is by different train lines or routes now there's an absolute ton of stops in every line but since we're only looking for a train that takes us to a level 11 we're only going to focus on the green line The green line altogether has 9 stops and greatly enough for you, the first stop is our destination. The Neon Express, if you take the right lines, can actually send you to some pretty safe levels. Okay Steve, here we are. Let's go to the next level. Welcome, welcome, Steve, to the great and absolutely huge Level 11. Level 11 is presumably an infinite city filled with your usual buildings such as stores, skyscrapers, libraries, and countless other buildings that you would find in a regular city. Level 11 is a class 1 difficulty with it being safe, it is quite secure, and has a minimal entity count. This level is probably the closest thing we can get to a real life society, and honestly, if I knew you were going to get pushed into an unsuspecting level, I would have made you come to this level from the barrier. It would have saved us a ton of hassle, and you would still have a bad However, you may not have to worry about that anymore as your task list for this level is actually to find a bag, stock it with sustenance, arm yourself with weapons, and locate a tear in the wall that will lead us to the next level. Trust me, you're gonna want that bag, especially since the upcoming levels might not offer much in terms of food and water. In this level, there are many entities, however, the most common entities are the facelings and hounds. Once again, both entities you do not have the best introduction to, but if you didn't know, the level 11 effect is in fact in effect in a level 11. I know, it's crazy. The level 11 effect is a behavior changing effect which will cause certain entities to act more like normal pedestrians and dogs. Sometimes, facelings will try and communicate with you like a normal person would, but since they don't have a mouth, they will not be saying a thing. Cars are actually in this level, however, they are completely inactive and sometimes, as you can see now there can just be a strange event that occurs where a random model of a car would just roll down the street until it eventually stops. The inside of these buildings have randomized interiors however despite being random shops will occasionally contain some useful items like that bag. Oh, what a coincidence. Honestly Steve my advice for this level is just to spend however long you want. This is a good level to hunker down and of course you don't want that but it's still a good level due to its high resources and safety. But other than that I'll prepare myself for the next couple of levels. But yeah.
Steve, whatever you do, just go. Okay, Steve, now that we have distance, what you need to find now is a regal doorway. Shit, on your left. Who the hell is this guy? 